The Cold War brought the terrifying possibility of nuclear devastation. During this tense era, the Soviet Union grappled with a serious espionage problem that could derail their atomic ambitions. High-flying American spy planes were peeking into their nuclear arsenal, snapping shots of secret silos. Even those hidden deep within Siberia's icy wilderness, American pilots had cracked a code. Isolated railroads and lonely roads, seemingly leading to nowhere, often ended up at Soviet nuclear sites. The Soviets found themselves in a race against time, needing a stealthy way to move 25-ton nuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles across vast distances without leaving any clues for American intelligence. Their answer was extraordinary. Enter the Miel Mi-12, a behemoth blending the size of an airliner with the nimbleness of a cargo helicopter. When it debuted at the Paris Air Convention in 1971, it left the world in awe. Nothing like it had ever been seen before. Alarm bells went off in the United States as strategists scrambled to figure out the purpose of this gigantic machine. After World War II, the critical importance of air superiority in warfare became glaringly obvious. For the United States, state-of-the-art combat helicopters quickly became essential tools in military operations across the globe. Meanwhile, in the Soviet Union, helicopters weren't merely military assets, they were a lifeline. Given the USSR's vast and sprawling landscape, these machines were crucial for knitting the country together. In terrains where other vehicles floundered, helicopters soared, opening up the USSR's remote and previously unreachable areas. They transformed the impossible into the attainable, facilitating transport and fostering nation-building efforts. By the 1960s, the Soviet Union's achievements in helicopter technology were clear. They were producing aircraft that didn't just meet, but often exceeded global benchmarks. As Cold War tensions intensified, the stakes of their missions grew higher. The ever-watchful American spy planes posed a constant threat, turning each mission into a matter of survival. American intelligence, with their vigilant eyes in the sky, began to uncover the once-hidden Soviet intercontinental ballistic missile sites, adding a layer of existential urgency to the Soviets' technological race. The Soviets, striving for secrecy, had nestled their missile launch sites deep within the wilderness. Railways, the main transport method for their massive first-generation nuclear missiles, unintentionally became trails that guided the U.S. to these covert locations. Recognizing this vulnerability, the Soviets knew they had to innovate to avoid exposure. They devised an audacious plan, airlifting these enormous weapons. Helicopters could make the missile sites unpredictable and nearly invisible to enemy surveillance. But there was a significant hurdle. The most powerful helicopter of the time couldn't handle even half the weight of a 25-ton ballistic missile. The challenge was daunting, to conceptualize, design, and engineer a helicopter of unparalleled strength, a Sky Titan capable of lifting twice the weight of any existing model. The stakes were sky high, the pressure immense. The future of the Soviet Union as a nuclear superpower was on the line. While the Soviet Union had a formidable nuclear arsenal, it was financially strained. To create the world's largest and most powerful airlift helicopter, they had to find a cost-effective solution. Soviet engineers, seasoned in helicopter design, had a history of building giant rotor crafts, with the Mil Mi-6 being their crowning achievement. As they took on this new, unprecedented challenge, the Mil Mi-6 served as their starting point. They started with a bold plan, make the already enormous Mil Mi-6 even bigger. Back then, the Mi-6 wasn't just a beast in terms of lifting power, it was also the fastest helicopter around. Their idea was to make it larger and add a second rotor engine at the back, aiming for a massive tandem rotor helicopter, similar to the Boeing CH-47 Chinook. But bringing this idea to life turned out to be a massive challenge. Early prototypes ran into serious problems. The rear rotor engine kept sucking in exhaust from the front engine, causing a cascade of performance issues. The tandem layout just wasn't working. The engineers at the Mil Moscow helicopter plant had to rethink everything, Instead of starting from scratch, they opted for a more budget-friendly approach. They chose to reuse the MI6's transmission systems and rotors, attaching them to a huge fuselage that looked like a gigantic airliner. Instead of the usual arrow-shaped wings, they designed wings with a span of about 100 feet, tapering inversely, with the MI6 rotors mounted at the ends. This ambitious design featured a transverse system configuration. This wasn't entirely a new idea. Early helicopter designs had used transverse systems, 
like the Folkwolf FW61, Folk Achgelis FA223 Drache, and Kamov KA22 Vintokril Convertiplane. These were fascinating hybrids of planes and rotorcrafts. As the Soviet Union faced its airlift challenges, this transverse system configuration seemed like the best bet to create the world's largest helicopter. In 1965, deep in the heart of Panki, the ambitious task of bringing a groundbreaking prototype to life began. This journey was anything but simple. It started with rigorous testing of experimental rigs, detailed mock-ups, and a sophisticated transmission system. Every piece of this massive machine required its own prototype, each one meticulously tested to ensure perfection. While the airframe might have looked familiar, its construction was far from ordinary. The body featured a tensioned skin design, with high-strength elements crafted from single blocks of metal. Inside this vast fuselage was a cabin measuring 28.15 meters long, 4.4 meters wide, and 4.4 meters high. At the front, the captain's deck housed the pilot, co-pilot, and a team of engineers. The rear end featured clamshell doors that opened to reveal a carefully angled cargo ramp, complete with built-in retractable supports. Multiple doors along the fuselage allowed easy access to the aircraft's interior. Atop the fuselage was a large fin and rudder, complemented by a gracefully designed dihedral tailplane. The helicopter stood on sturdy paired wheels, intricately connected to the main body through a network of strong struts supporting the rotor systems and wings. A pair of bumper wheels and sturdy support pads made sure the cargo ramp aligned perfectly. The aircraft was equipped with modern electric hoists that could glide along beams or work effortlessly with a forklift to help move cargo around. Where the aircraft's body meets the horizon, the wings stand out. These wings aren't typical. They feature an inverse taper, a smart design to reduce drag and boost lift. Attached to them are the main rotors, each stretching an impressive 35 meters. These rotors work together flawlessly, with connecting shafts keeping them in sync. They spin in opposite directions. The port rotor turns counterclockwise, and the starboard one turns clockwise. This counter-rotation keeps the flight stable without needing a tail rotor. Driving the biggest helicopter ever built are twin Soloviev D25VF turboshaft engines. These engines produce a combined 28,600 horsepower, far surpassing the power of many famous helicopters. To give you an idea, the Sikorsky CH-53E Super Stallion, one of the toughest helicopters out there, generates about 13,650 horsepower from its three engines. The design also includes large access panels that can double as platforms for maintenance crews. One of the most fascinating aspects of the V-12 was its landing gear. Unlike typical helicopter landing gear, the V-12's undercarriage featured a twin-wheeled nose unit and five primary landing gears, each with four wheels, giving it the look of a heavy cargo plane. Piloting this aerial giant was no small feat. The flight deck, home to the pilot and co-pilot, provided a panoramic view. Steering the V-12 required a sophisticated system that demanded extensive training. When pilots made adjustments, it set off a chain reaction. This began with direct mechanical actions, moved through an intermediate system, with low-powered hydraulic boosters and ended with high-powered actuators near the main gearboxes. Given the aircraft's enormous size, structural flexibility, and significant frictional forces, this sequential control system was crucial. In 1968, when the first prototype was finished, the biggest challenge was developing the right training protocols so new pilots could understand the unique and complex systems of this massive helicopter. Despite its complex controls, the MI-12 prototype performed beyond expectations, easily handling its designed cargo capacity of over 25 tons. Not long after, it earned eight world records as recognized by the Fédération Aéronautique Internationale. The helicopter's ascent to greatness lies in its unmatched ability to tackle varying altitudes while carrying increasingly heavy loads. Remarkably, three of its records remain unbeaten. Between May and June of 1971, the groundbreaking V-12 prototype, SSSR-21142, embarked on an exhilarating tour across Europe. The highlight was its star appearance at the 29th Paris Air Show at Le Bourget, proudly showcasing the exhibit code H833. Its colossal size left an indelible mark, declaring boldly that the Soviet Union had created the world's largest helicopter. 
The sheer scale of the V12 is almost unimaginable without witnessing it in person. Each twin rotor boasts a diameter of 114 feet 10 inches, exceeding even the wingspan of the famous Boeing 737, a staple in commercial aviation. When it comes to lifting capacity, the V-12's maximum takeoff weight is around 231,485 pounds, comparable to that of a Boeing 757-200, a sizable commercial jet. Stretching about 121 feet 5 inches, it's slightly shorter than an Airbus A320, yet its interior reveals its vastness. The helicopter's roomy cabin can house an entire missile system or even two full-size buses, showcasing its impressive potential as a heavy-lift aircraft. The Soviets achieved what once seemed unthinkable, solving their nuclear delivery challenge with ingenuity and might. By the time the helicopter was production ready, its initial purpose had vanished. The world's largest helicopter was created to outmaneuver American reconnaissance planes and hide the Soviet Union's secret nuclear silos. But by the time it was ready to fly, that need had disappeared. In 1959, the Americans launched their first spy satellite, revolutionizing intelligence gathering. This satellite could capture more images of Soviet territory in a single day than all previous spy plane missions combined. This leap in technology made it much harder for the Soviets to hide their Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles, or ICBMs. By the 1970s, the Soviets had developed a new class of ICBMs. These were compact enough to be transported on trucks, making them difficult for satellites to track. In this new context, the V-12, despite its impressive size and capabilities, seemed unnecessary. It was a giant with a specific mission, but beyond that, its usefulness was limited. The need for a helicopter that could transport 44 tons of cargo or 200 passengers was rare. By 1974, the V-12 story ended. American intelligence was still pondering the implications of this massive helicopter, but with only two prototypes and many technical problems unresolved, the project was abandoned. The Soviets then shifted their focus to designing a new heavy-lift helicopter, opting for a more conventional single-rotor design.